Hi, I'm Alec Delancey, psychologist working in the field of mental health and education. And today I would like to look at another research and comment on it. This research is entitled Identifying and Removing Ableism from Tier 1 School-Wide Positive Behavior Support Practices. I think this is a, a good piece of research. It's fairly recent and uh, it really tackles this question of ableism in school-wide positive behavior support. So keep in mind that the statements made here are based on my views or opinion, as well as research I will have done for this video. I will put links in the description based on my research. The content presented here should never be used as a substitute for direct medical and or psychological advice from your doctor or a qualified physician or clinician. Uh, this video is based on my personal desire to bring to consumers the science behind mental health and related behaviors. So this research, it was done in uh, Australia. So it was done across Australia. So of course, it's on one particular part of the earth and we can utilize the information in other areas, but just keep in mind that it was done in Australia and sometimes different cultural contexts can exist, but it's a good research to help us think, right? So here we have it. So across Australia, almost one third of schools have been trained to implement school-wide positive behavior support. So that's good. Schools that are trained to implement school-wide positive behavior support, that's always a beautiful thing. Uh, keep in mind, the objective really is to help students and teachers to create an environment that is not chaotic, but an environment that can promote learning can promote discipline. So it's an environment that looks at increasing contact hours, increasing a high level of discipline, decreasing negative behaviors. So that, that's the objective of having a school-wide positive behavior support plan in place. So once there um, is this balance, then learning, teaching, can continue to improve in a very uh, balanced and supportive climate. So that's good to have this school-wide positive behavior support. The research goes on to say that, and, and this is also good, that they had parents or guardians or family members, as well as students involved in coming up with some of the expected behaviors. So I thought that this was quite good. Sometimes what happens is that you have the policy makers who will decide, okay, so these are the behaviors we expect to see in school and without consultation. But in this research, it shows that in Australia, there were consultation to create the school-wide positive behavior support plan. So that's good. What happens is that when you have students or family members that were involved, people feel a part of something. So the, the students in these schools, they will more than likely comply because they will have been involved in contributing to uh, making suggestions as to what they should be doing that will be constitute, considered as positive behaviors. Also, parents too, because the parents will have been involved or the guardians will have been involved in making suggestions as to what should be positive behaviors or what should be displayed as positive behaviors in these schools. The parents or the guardians will support the teachers, support the um, administration to make certain that the children are engaging in this positive behavior. So that's good to have all persons on board, such as the parents, as well as the students. The research talks about the objective is to create 
a climate where students can thrive both academically and behaviorally. So this is a good goal. I mean, this should be the goal of creating the school-wide positive behavior plan and not just to reduce negative behaviors. Sometimes what happens is that the focus is just on negative behaviors without recognizing that the focus should be on creating a stable school environment so that you can have less negative behaviors, but also increase academic involvement, both for teachers and for the students. So once you have less behavioral challenges that the teacher will have to contend with or treat with, then you have more contact hours, you have a greater opportunity to do testing, you have the opportunity to uh, make certain that the curriculum is covered because you have less disruption in the school. So you persons involved in creating positive behavioral plans should keep this in mind and not just passively talk about academics but just strictly focus on reducing negative behaviors. That should really not be the 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 ideal. Okay, so having that balance to promote academics or to promote uh, the curriculum as well as to reduce negative behaviors should really be the ideal goal. So the research goes on to talk about implementation is destined to fail if we do not in tandem address the conditions we create that act as barriers for students with disability. All right, so this is also key to consider. And I, I thought that this really came out in this particular research here, that the focus was looking at students who have a disability. So this could be either a physical challenge or maybe it's a mental health challenge. So I'm getting the idea that these schools that were trained using this school-wide positive behavioral um, implementation, these schools are inclusive schools. And it's, it's really good to have inclusive schools because, well, the research shows that um, it really contributes to the development of the child as well as the development of teachers. What the research is showing is that it is important to address conditions that can be created because of having these disciplinary metrics. So imagine for a while, if you may, that a student probably has a physical issue and let's say they are on a wheelchair and they have to go to the to the washroom, the toilet, and the toilet is uh, probably a half mile away. Well, it wouldn't be a half mile away, but let's just say it's a good distance away. And when the bell goes, they have to make certain that they go to the washroom that is a little distance away, and then either come to class. The students who do not uh, do not use wheelchairs may be more likely to rush to the washroom, uh, finish up themselves and get back to class if the washrooms are close by. But the student who might be on a wheelchair has to go a little distance. So if they reach late to class, based on a disciplinary matrix that talks about being early for class or probably um, being early for the gym, um, gym sessions or PE sessions, this student can be uh, disciplined or experience a negative consequence because they are late. So it's important when creating behavioral metrics that this be taken into consideration. And I think this is where the research really shows that this ableism, and ableism has to do with discrimination in favor of able-bodied people. So the research is, is showing that when we are creating school-wide positive behavior support and these metrics, we need to make certain that ableism does not exist in it. So there must be a way to help students who 
might have some kind of mental health issue or some physical issue to also be accountable. So it's not that they're not accountable. They have to be accountable. Uh, but you may have to modify for these students somewhat a behavioral matrix. And a good example can be a student who is maybe diagnosed with ADHD or possibly intermittent explosive disorder. If a school-wide uh, behavioral support does not take into consideration these students, then what can happen is that the expectations can be higher for these students and they may actually have to put out greater effort. And if they have to put out greater effort because of their disabilities, they may appear to, at times, fail in their performance behaviorally of what is expected in the school. As we know, for example, ADHD, it is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And it's a disorder that affects the uh, emotional regulation at times. It can affect attention, you know, impulsivity, uh, hyperactivity, and uh, the child could, or the student, can find themselves paying less attention to something that doesn't bring internal motivation. And in the case of intermittent explosive disorder, you can have a, a student who may have these episodes of anger or a sudden outburst of anger or they may lose control of themselves and become very aggressive from time to time and if they are diagnosed then there must be some way that the school-wide behavioral or the school-wide positive behavior support must take into consideration that from time to time these students may show uh, behaviors that uh, are no doubt will be deemed as inappropriate. But these behaviors must be taken into a context given the fact that they have a disorder. So these are important things to work out when creating a school-wide or implementing a school-wide behavioral, positive behavioral support. Now, a way to probably treat with this can be to um, have persons who have disabilities be a part of creating these school-wide positive behavioral support matrix. So they will be able to add valuable information in the creation of these matrix. Also to schools who hire persons with disabilities, either as teachers or as administrators, they will be able to bring this balance or this or contribute to a level of balance in a school-wide positive behavior support plan. All right, I think that it's important that persons with disabilities, either mental health, physical disabilities, be a part of the school population so that there is an understanding that while there are expectations of persons on the school compound, there might be some levels at which a child might be disciplined uh, if they possess or if they have or if they are diagnosed with any particular disability. So it's up to the school, it's up to the district, it's up to the administration to really craft out uh, these school-wide positive behavioral support plans in such a way that doesn't create any kind of ableism or doesn't create the challenge of having some students be disadvantaged. So I thought that this research was very interesting and the research like these are really important I hope that this commentary was valuable. If so, you can like, uh, share this video. And if you are in the field of education or mental health or in 
school-wide positive behavior support, it's important to really consider the part that ableism can play when creating these uh, matrix, when creating these behavioral plans for the school. So again, you can like, subscribe, and looking forward to see you in the next one. Take care.